I'm Jill Johnson. And I'm Bjorn Johnson. Welcome to your weekly dose of goat. The goats are back on the roof. And so are we. So we thought we'd ask the family about their earliest goat memories. Occasionally I'll hear a story of somebody was eating here or somebody was driving by or somebody was taking a photograph when a goat jumped off the roof and lo and behold it hung himself. Well one, none of the ropes, or none of the goats are tied with any ropes whatsoever. And uh, I won't deny that a couple of goats have taken their uh, leap of faith into a, uh, into a stack of cedar bushes. And none of them had come out any harm for the worse. They all bellered a little bit, wanted to go back on the roof where the rest of their crowd was, the rest of their herd was. So uh, anything you've heard outside of that, fictitious. But it makes for a great story. I got a couple heroic dishwashers that claim they remember that and they saved that goat with mouth to mouth. Doubtful. My brother Lars had a friend on Washington Island that was moving and they had Angora goats. And he felt sorry for the last six. And he didn't have room for him for the goats at his barn. But he said that I could take him out at my farm. And I live up a little bit out by uh, Wagon Trail, out in that neck of the woods. And I live on a 40-acre farm on a dead-end road with no animals. But trying to get the water from the house to the barn and pickle buckets it's a long trek, and I can't tell you how many times I fell down trying to get the water just to, out to the goats. You know, I didn't have a hose hookup or anything like that in the winter time, and I just said, "No, I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not taking care of goats." <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I have any real unusual goat stories. Oh, one comes to one does come to mind. Um, I happen to be away on business. Um, uh, and my wife and kids were at home and, and it was a stormy night and my wife got a call and said, um, we found your, found your goats on Beach Road, which was about two to three miles away from our farm. And the goats had escaped the entire herd and it ended up on uh, somebody's deck down on Beach Road. And uh, I think my wife has told the story before as well, but uh, certainly um, we were grateful that we were able to get them back and got a phone call. But of course, uh, the, the goats did a number on the deck and we had to make sure that we worked with the uh, property owner to uh, make some improvements to their deck. About, uh, oh, it must have been about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I was short on goats. Short on obedient goats, let's just say. You need a leader for the goats. And my brother and I were scratching our heads and I was coming home from Sturgeon Bay and Lars said, stop by at the farm outside of Sturgeon Bay, a great little petting zoo area. So I pulled in there and he said, look for a guy by the name of Elmer Tank. And uh, Elmer comes out and he says, what do you need? And I said, I need goats for the restaurant. And he goes, I got one for you right to start out with and I'll have some more later on. I said, well, I'll come back because I don't have any rails on my truck or a cap. And he says, this goat can ride right up front with you in the pickup truck. And I thought he was kidding, he wasn't kidding. He came out with the goat. I opened the door, he set it down there, and it sat there pretty as you please for the ride, enjoyed the air conditioning. We even stopped for an ice cream and a cup of coffee going through Bailey's on the way home. That goat was Icicle, and he was with us for a long time. Great goat, very photogenic. Uh, unfortunately, he's not around today, but uh, yeah, nice goat. It's funny, you know, sometimes I hear people say, hey, look, there's a dog on the roof, you know. I don't know sometimes if they know what a goat looks like. You know, there's all different breeds and all different kinds. And, you know, we have a little bit of a variety of goats. So my favorite are the little pygmies, the little tiny ones that don't get very big. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, it, it's humbling to think that people would like to come to our little mom and pop's restaurant just to come and see the goats. I'm leaving work, I get a phone call, and a lady from Washington Island calls me. And she says, I've got a goat that won't leave my neighbor's piglets alone. And the mother sow is getting upset and I afraid that he's gonna get hurt. Would you be willing to take this goat off my hands, no charge? And I said, if you can get him here and get him on the roof, I'll take the goat. Now this is Sunday about three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm getting ready to head for home and I uh, have myself a bite to eat. So about 45 minutes later, here comes a lady in a minivan with this great big billy goat in the back with all the seats removed. And I'm saying, you must be the lady from the island. She said, I am. I'm like, I didn't think you were coming today. And she said, well, you said if I could get him on the roof. I said, well, have at it. And she put that goat on the roof and he took over. He was the leader for, oh, geez, I had to be 14 years. 
Yeah, and uh, another great goat, another very photogenic goat with us a long time. Yeah, I'm not a goat girl, but the Angora goat's got a beautiful home with some ladies that spin wool. So they were, I found them new homes. <laughs> it is interesting. We thought we had two winners one time. These two kids outside of, I want to say it was Bellevue, they called us up and said, uh, in tears, I could hear them on the phone, that their father is going to send two goats that they raise as pets to the butcher. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? She said, well, if he said if I could find another home for the goats that the butcher is willing to pay, that they could go there instead. And I said, what's the butcher going to pay? She said, 90 bucks a goat. And I said, so it's going to cost me 180 bucks for two goats. She says, yeah. I said, oh, if you can bring them up here, I'll take them. I felt bad. So when they showed up, one kid was nine, one kid was seven. Little boy, little girl, brother and sister. And they said they delivered the goats and we couldn't get them on the roof. So I said, you know what, don't worry about it, they'll learn. It was inky and caramel. So we took those two goats out to the farm. They blended in very well. We tried to get them on the roof. We had those goats for 16 years. They wouldn't go on the roof. So we were stuck with those goats, but they were great goats. You saw Inky in the parade, very photogenic. He liked the ride in a truck, he just didn't want to go on the roof. So sometimes he'd go for the ride here and the ride back and that was it. Now, those same two kids, about three months later, they called me up and they said, my dad's got a whole bunch of chickens that are gonna go to the butchers. And I said, no, I draw the line at chickens. I'm only putting goats on the roof. Thanks for watching this episode of your weekly dose of goat. See you next week, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And most important, stay safe out there.